Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're in round two of the U.S. Chess Championship. Our competitors, White's going to be played by Nakamura, the top American by far, rating 2798. One of the top players in the world playing phenomenal chess, especially this year, already won two big tournaments. His opponent playing the black pieces is a Kobian, rating 2713. Actually got second place in this tournament last year, so no stranger to success at the U.S. Chess Championship. So we'll go ahead and get started. Nakamura starts out with pawn 2e4. Pawn e6. So we do see the French defense. Pawn d4, pawn d5, knight c3, and then pawn takes here on e4. Not the most common. Typically you're going to see a few things from black. Knight to f6, pawn up here to e5, bringing the knight down here to d7. Or instead of the knight coming out here with an early knight to c3, because white usually has the option just playing pawn here to e5, but then after knight to c3, a lot of times you'll see the bishop come down here to b4. Go ahead and put a double pawn here on the c-file. That's going to be completely fine. But black decides for a little bit different approach. Decides to go ahead and take here on e4. And then after the knight captures, we have knight here to d7. Knight f3, both sides just developing the pieces a little bit. Nakamura does decide to go ahead and exchange off these knights here on f6. So knight f6, recapture here. Bishop to d3, allowing him to castle on the king side if he chooses. And then just developing his minor pieces. Pawn to a c5, opening up the door. Nakamura doesn't want to capture here. You never want to capture and then just immediately have your opponent recapture and gain a tempo right here. So all of a sudden, black has the center of the board controlled, and all of a sudden, white doesn't have either of a central pawn. So Nakamura is not going to do that, but just in case you kind of see this in your own game, don't be rushing to capture your opponent's pawns, uh, especially if they can just recapture and kind of gain an advantage in the center of the board. Bishop here to e3, just opening up the possibility if he does want to castle on the queen side, he can bring his queen here to d2, e2, and then castle on the queen side if he wants to. Queen here to c7, just getting that queen involved. Queen up here to e2. Bishop here to e7, getting rid of the castle on the king side as well. And this is the one spot where Nakamura honestly can decide to castle on either side. It's completely okay. Uh, me personally, uh, I'm more tending to castle on the king side. It's just a little bit safer. There's a lot of action going on the queen side. I feel like black can definitely open this up and make it very difficult on the queen side. But the Castling on the queen side, it's going to be very easy to open up this d file after the pawn takes here on c5. Does have protection from this bishop here. So having the rook here on d1 could cause a lot of problems for black. So it really just depends on preference. Nakamura does decide to go for a little bit more of the aggressive approach. He is playing white. He has to make sure that he gets all of these wins. You know, he could not lose this entire tournament, but if everyone else is beating their opponents, all of a sudden he's going to see himself at the bottom. So he needs to make sure that when he's playing, especially as the white pieces, that he's going for the win every time. So that's exactly what he does. He plays the more aggressive move of king castling on the queen side. Here we see castle on the king side from Akobian. And then the pawn takes here on c5, as we talked about. Now, the bishop is protecting it. Uh, black does have you know this option here just to take with his bishop, uh, and he does have protection with his queen. But this is a turning point in the game because this kind of sets up how the rest of this game is going to take place. Instead of taking with the bishop here on c5, Akobi decides to go and play pawn to b6, giving up material on board. So after the pawn takes, the pawn recaptures b6, and Black has pretty much played his hand. He said, hey, I've given up material. Nakamura, you are a higher ranked player, so I'm going to beat you by opening up the queen side and just throwing everything I have at you, and you're going to have to try to defend against it. Nakamura on the other side decides, okay, uh, let's play that game. I haven't really moved my pieces up much. It's still kind of playing defensive mode. None of his pieces have gone past this third rank here. So for a while, Nakamura is going to have to play defense. He can't be too aggressive because the queen side's just too open. The rooks can swing over here, very easily get involved. Black does have a double bishop here. He can kind of aim all that over here on the king side. So needs to be somewhat defensive. And if he can save himself from getting 
checkmated early on or some crucial mistake, he's going to be okay in the endgame. But that's kind of what both sides are going to be looking to do after that move of pawn just giving up more material here on b6. So king here to b1 does want to make sure that he does protect this pawn on a2 since it is being attacked by this rook here on a8. Bishop here to b7 opening up the door. White's going to come over here, play knight here to d4. Definitely has to make sure that all his material starts to focus on the, the queen side and get just more protection over there. Rook here to a5. I, I don't really like this move uh, from black. I don't think it really does too much. Uh, yeah, it's kind of opening up the door if the rook needs to come over here to a8. Uh, but for right now, it's not doing too much. Uh, and I think it's somewhat of a wasted move. Maybe bishop here to c5 may be better. Could always just play rook to c8. Could play rook here to d8. Uh, these are you know, open file and a semi-open file that these rooks are going to be very, very good on. So Black does decide to go ahead and play rook here to a5, uh, knight here to b5. This is definitely an important square. It does have protection from this bishop here on d3, and it's kind of a pain for black to deal with. It does force this queen to move, and it does take some of the squares away from this rook. If you know, if it kind of wants to retreat back here to a7 for any reason, he can't really do that. The queen's going to come down here to c7 or c6, safe little square. It also has a double attack on this pawn here on g2. So that's definitely how you always want to, to move. If your opponent forces you to move, especially your queen, you want to respond in a place where it actually threatens your opponent. So now they have to be thinking, okay, I, I can't continue my attack. I have to be worried about this pawn or this square that they're now attacking. Bishop comes back here to a d2, forcing the rook to move. So the rook is going to come back here to a8, and then pawn up here to f3. So Nakamura decides to go ahead and get rid of the threat that was the rook, and now he's just going to protect this pawn here on d2 by just playing the simple pawn here to f3. Black Knight plays bishop here to a6, and Nakamura responds with pawn to c4. And this is kind of a, a stake in the ground, letting Black know that White feels confident in his position. Typically, if your opponent's throwing everything at the side of the board that you've castled, you're not going to be playing your pawns pushing forward too much. Definitely not two squares like Nakamura is, but if you kind of look at it, it's very tough for black to get past this. This is a nice little diagonal from Nakamori. He has a great outpost here on b5 with his knight. His pawn's protecting, his bishop's protecting the pawn, his queen's protecting all of these pieces. So it's not real clear how black is actually going to fight through this. Now he does play rook here to d8. Again, as we talked about, you want to get more pieces involved into the action, especially since black's down in material right now. He needs to have a very strong attack. Bishop here to c3, just getting it into a better square. This chain right here is not really going to move so uh, this is a much more central square that's attacking more material queen here to c5 definitely think this is a, a big mistake from black had a few other options as far as how he wanted to attack but the queen here on c5 just allows nakamura to play bishop here to d4 which is a huge attack there's not a lot of great squares that black can actually respond here if black comes down and takes with his his rook, then we see the knight take. If the queen tries to recapture, we have a discovered attack. Check here, this queen's going to fall. Definitely would not fall for that. The queen can't come to d6 or c7 because of the knight. If it comes here to c6, all of a sudden we see the bishop take after the bishop takes. Then this bishop here to e4. It is a discovered attack on the rook, but also it's attacking this queen and this rook here on a8, white's going to go up even more material on the board. Black does decide to go ahead and play queen back here to c8, but uh, again, black does not want to be in the position where white's dominating the aggression and black's just kind of sitting back. He's down in material, so this is definitely not going well. But then now the bishop can come here to b6, white's up in material, and white's being the aggressor, so things are not looking good for black at the moment. Now rook here to d7 since it was being attacked. Bishop coming back here to f2. It already took that material so it's just going to come back to safe zone. Uh, bishop here to c5. Nakamura is completely okay exchanging material off the board. He's now up two pawns. If he can get to an end game and he's up two pawns, he's going to win that 100 times out of 100. So the queen takes and then the bishop's going to come here to e4. Again, this is a great central square for this bishop attacking the rook here. 
if Black wants to exchange off material, that's going to be fine. We're just going to get down to the end game. But it also opens up the door for these rooks to start getting exchange off the board. Rook here to a B8. Again, it's not going to matter too much. There's still this outpost piece here on B5 being protected by the pawn and the queen here on E2. Nakamura does a phenomenal job this game of really using all his pieces to defend his other pieces while still having a very strong attack at all points. Uh, that's so hard to do, especially at this level of chess, but Nakamura has been playing extremely well lately, so it doesn't shock me at all. Rook taking here on d7, uh, and the knight recapturing. So, more material that black gets off the board, it's going to be more and more difficult for him to come back and actually win, or even tie this game. Now, the rook's going to swing over here to c1. Again, this square here on c4 is very, very valuable, so wants to make sure that it does have some protection. Also, doesn't want to allow his opponent to have some crazy attack uh, where it kind of forks a rook and his his king's over here unprotected. So it brings it over there for a little bit of protection. Knight here to f6. Bishop back here to d3, protecting this long diagonals we talked about. Pawn here to g6. Rook over here to d1, opening up the door if he does want to attack on this d file. Uh, bishop takes. That's going to be fine. Pawn recaptures. Hey, if black wants to exchange more material off the board, that's completely okay. Knight here to d5. Rook here to c1, forcing the queen back. Queen's going to come down here to d4. Pawn here to g3. And this is crucial. There's a few options uh, that white has here. Uh, black's kind of threatening knight here to f Four, attacking both the bishop and the queen. So we could see the bishop come here to c4. Uh, this is probably what I would have played. Uh, but I, I do think pawn to g3, uh, it's probably just as good. But it does kind of allow your opponent to know, hey, I'm looking at every move that you could possibly do. And I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to shut you off of doing everything you do. So as far as a mental aspect, uh, I think pawn to g3 is definitely better in that respect. Now the rook's going to swing over here to d8. Bishop here to c4. Knight's coming down here. That's going to be completely okay if white wants to exchange off the board. But decides to go ahead and bring his bishop back here to b3. Does want to hold on to that. Rook up here to b8. Pawn here to a4. There's just no way for black to really push through this. Look at how well all these pieces are really defending each other. It's going to be very difficult for, for black to do too much. And white, if he wants to, can, you know, Nakamura can start pushing his pawns over here on the queen side. Uh, knight up here to f5. Queen up here to e4. Queen down here. Rook up here to c2. Again, black's trying to attack, but he only has one real piece in the attack zone, and white just has too many pieces here to, to really defend against this. Uh, and so the queen's going to come back here to d8. Again, you don't want to be in defensive mode, especially when you're down so much material against a strong player. Pawn here to g4. Nakamura decides to go ahead and start attacking on the king side. Pawn here to f4. Queen up here attacking the rook. The rook's going to swing down here to b7 to make sure it's not being attacked. Pawn up here to h4. There's just too much threats over here for black to deal with. Uh, queen down here. All of a sudden, pawn to h5. Uh, also threatening pawn here to h6. Uh, and then that would be you know checkmate here on queen to g7. If the queen tried to come back, let's say to d8, uh, then all of a sudden it's still going to be very difficult with pawn to h6. You know the the queen's going to come over here. And then all of a sudden we could see a few moves. Just pawn to g5 solidifying if it wanted to. That's fine. You could also see the pawn starting to push forward. Now that the queen here on e5 is protecting the pawn, then all of a sudden black's going to have to deal with these pawns over here. There's just too many threats on board. And at any time there's going to be checkmate by a queen here on g7. So this queen's kind of stuck. All of a sudden, there's just too much material on board. If black decided to go ahead and take here on h5, same kind of story. Pawn takes here on h5. Next move is going to be pawn here to h6. There's just no great squares for black to really deal with. Now, all of a sudden, the rook can swing over here to g2, check the king. Uh, again, no good options. Uh, White's completely dominating in this position, and so Black decides to go ahead and resign. So Nakamura, congratulations to him. Already has two wins under his belt. One is Black, one is White. So he's playing phenomenal chess. I give a lot of credit to you know Kobe, and he knew he was playing against a strong opponent. 
playing the black pieces he came in and he was going to give it his all and actually try for a win uh, and so he had some some sacrifices on the queen side that he thought would work out but Nakamura playing strong chess uh, fought off all of the stuff that black was throwing so Great game by both of them. I'm really excited just to see some phenomenal games just through round two of the U.S. Chess Championship. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Try to have as much coverage as I can. Uh, but thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.